we're going to solve a common type of optimization problem where we're asked to find the points on a function that are closest to a given point. In this problem, from Larson's calculus, we're asked which points on the graph of this parabola, y equals 4 minus x squared, are closest to the point 0, 2. So we can see in this figure from the textbook, we've got the point 0, 2, and we're trying to find the points on the parabola that are closest to that point 0, 2. So the optimizing that we're doing is minimizing the distance from a point on the parabola to the point zero 02. Where do these points take on a minimum distance? To begin an optimization problem, we want to write our primary equation, which is an equation for the quantity we're trying to optimize. Again, in this case, we're trying to minimize distance. So we begin with the distance formula. What we're finding the distance between is the distance between an arbitrary point xy on our parabola, so this is just an arbitrary point on this curve, and we're trying to represent the distance between this arbitrary point and the point in question 0, 2. So this equation is the distance between those points x and y, that comes from the arbitrary point on our parabola, and of course it's x minus 0. 0 is the x coordinate of the point 0, 2, y minus 2. 2 is the y-coordinate of the point 0, 2. We square these differences, add them together, take a square root. This is the distance. The optimization process will have us find the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate, which will minimize this quantity. And from here, we just have a little bit of algebra to do. x minus 0 squared, of course, is just x squared. With y minus 2 squared, since xy is a point on our parabola, we know that y equals 4 minus x squared. So we can replace y with 4 minus x squared. Again, that's because xy is a point on the parabola, so it must be the case that y equals 4 minus x squared. So y minus 2 becomes 4 minus x squared minus 2. And again, this quantity is also being squared. Then 4 minus 2 simplifies to just 2, and at this point we can expand 2 minus x squared squared. That becomes 4 minus 4x squared plus x to the fourth. And then simplifying again by combining x squared and minus 4x squared, we get x to the fourth minus 3x squared plus 4. This, of course, is all in a square root. Now remember, we're trying to minimize this distance. So in fact, we don't really have to worry about the square root because where the square root of this expression will be minimized, is simply wherever this expression in the square root will be minimized. So we can just focus on the thing that's in the square root. If we can minimize that, that will of course also be where the square root takes on its minimum value. So this expression under the radical is our f of x, and we're going to try to minimize this. It's important that we take a second to consider our domain, though. In an optimization problem, you need to check the endpoints of the domain if there are any. In this case, our domain is all real numbers, so there are no endpoints to check. Of course, f of x is just a polynomial, so its domain is all real numbers, and there are no contextual restrictions in this problem that we would have to place on the domain. In a lot of problems, you might not want x to be negative, for example, if x is representing the side of a box. But in this case, there are no such restrictions. Even with the distance equation, x could be anything, and since we have these quantities being squared, the distance would still be defined. So the domain is all real numbers. We don't have any endpoints to check. We can proceed with finding the critical points of this function in order to find its minimum values. So we're now just going through the usual process for finding extreme values of a function. We take our function and then find its derivative. This is just a couple applications of the power rule. x to the fourth becomes 4x cubed. 3x squared becomes 6x. And of course, we are subtracting. Plus 4 just becomes 0. Now, to find the critical points, we have to consider where is this derivative undefined? Nowhere, 
Okay, so then set it equal to zero and let's solve for x. To do that, just factor out an x. So we have x times 4x squared minus 6 equals zero and then apply the zero product property. In order for this product to equal zero, it must be that either of the factors are zero. If we set this factor equal to zero, then of course we get that x equals zero. If we set this factor equal to zero, then we would add six to both sides, divide everything by four, so x squared equals six fourths, or three halves, and then just take square roots. And so we get that x equals plus or minus the square root of three halves. Now that we found the critical points of our function, all that remains is to use the first derivative test or the second derivative test to classify these as mins, maxes, or neither before we can make a conclusion about where the points are on the parabola that are closest to zero two. The second derivative test would work quickly to classify these. Just take the second derivative, plug in these x values, and establish the concavity. However, we'll use the first derivative test just to mix things up. And here is my color-coded application of the derivative test. I've sketched out here a number line just to represent the intervals between the critical points. So the only things I've marked on here are the critical points, and to use the first derivative test, we want to see what's happening to the function, is it increasing or decreasing, on each interval between the critical points. To do that, we simply take a number from each interval and plug it into the derivative. If the derivative is positive at that point, then the interval must be increasing. For example, in this orange interval from negative infinity to negative root three halves, I just have to take any point from that interval. I know that negative two is in this interval since negative two is less than negative square root of three halves. And if I take negative two, and then plug it into the derivative, this is what I get. It's negative 20, which is less than zero. That means on this whole interval, the function must be decreasing. It can't switch from decreasing to increasing on the interval, because to do that, it would have to cross through zero. But we know the derivative doesn't cross through zero until the critical point. So this whole interval must have the function decreasing. Then we take a point between negative root three halves and zero. A point in this interval is negative one, for example. So we plug that into the derivative and we get two, which is positive. So on this whole interval, the derivative is positive and thus the function is increasing. Then between zero and the square root of three halves, positive one is in that interval. So we plug in positive one and we get negative two, which is less than zero. So the function is decreasing on that interval. Similarly, on this final interval from root three halves to infinity, we plug in two and find that the function is increasing. Now, how do we use this information to determine where the mins and maxes are? Well, what we see is the function is decreasing and then increasing at x equals negative root three over two. It switches from decreasing to increasing. So clearly that has to be a minimum of the function. Similarly, for positive root three over two, the function is decreasing then increasing. So we must have a minimum there at positive root three over two. On the other hand, at x equals zero, the function is increasing then decreasing. So there we would have a maximum. Now remember, we're trying to minimize the distance. So the two points we're actually interested in then are positive and negative root three over two. So we know that x equals plus or minus root three over two are minimums, but it could be that one x gives us a point that's actually closer to zero two than the other, even though they might both be minimums. So we would have to plug these into the distance formula that we had before to see which one actually gives the smallest distance. However, in this case, we can notice that what we've got here is an even function. This parabola is symmetric about the y-axis. It's symmetric about x equals zero. So we actually know that the 
distance from 0 to is going to be the same for positive root 3 over 2 as it is for negative root 3 over 2, because this is an even function symmetric about the y-axis. Since the symmetry of the parabola guarantees us that the distance from 0 to to the point where x is positive and negative root 3 over 2 will be the same, those will be the same minimum distances, all that remains is to take those x values and plug them into the parabola to see what the y coordinate is. And doing that, here is our conclusion. For x equals negative root 3 over 2, the y coordinate on the parabola is 5 halves. And of course, since it is symmetric, the y coordinate is 5 halves for positive root 3 over 2 as well. And so these are the two points on the parabola closest to the point 0, 2, which was the original question. The closest points are root 3 halves, 5 halves, and negative root 3 halves, 5 halves. Hope this was helpful. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Parted hearts and heavy minds weighed down by the catalyst, sinking to the stomachs that plummeted at the accident. Shot off all my habits to addicts ripped by a catapult. Pulled apart the patterns in man that stood as a manifold. Man of many pains with a number that he had to call. Calculate the damage of himself and what's collateral. Being told he's not enough until he's swallowed.